Good afternoon. Um, welcome to episode 978. The countdown continues. Yeah, I realize I'll be hitting episode 1000 in 12 days? No, 22 days. So that'll be around the December, that's Jan uh, February, right month, February 26th, just tracking. Anyway, because I'm starting some big, something big's happening that day, by the way. So stay tuned for that. Anyway, I'm jumping ahead of myself. So today's topic is, it's time to own yourself. And the questions that come up are, what is that and how do you do it? So I'll explain both of those and explain what I mean by owning yourself. Because when you do, you win. When you do, you come back to self. When you do, you're only going to be a much healthier place with everybody around you. But I'm getting ahead of myself. So let me explain what I mean by owning yourself first, because then maybe you get a picture of what I'm talking about. <laughs> Sorry, excuse me a second. I'm just thinking about what I was going to begin in like 17 things showed up once. I'm like, um, let me cherry pick which I want to talk about. So let me start from here. Have you noticed? Yeah, this is a good place. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I had to make sure I'm clear about that. Have you noticed that sometimes life gets the better of you? Have you noticed that sometimes your inner state of balance gets knocked, whacked out of sight because something happened, somebody said something, you saw something, you read something, you heard something. You said something, somebody else said something, etc., 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 that knocks you off center. And if you're human, you should have answered yes to that one, because most of us have, at some point, rather, been the um, unwitting ping pong ball of somebody else's game. Clear? So let me say another couple of examples to make sure you get this. Um, have you been in a relationship where you felt like you could walk on eggshells around your partner? Have you been in a relationship where you felt like you could do nothing right? Similar, but different. Um, have you been in a job where you don't say anything to the boss because you're worried you're going to get fired? I'm giving you lots of different scenarios and what ifs because all of these things I'm talking about is where you're not owning yourself. Let me throw a few more on the table just so you can see if they fit for you because you may not have had an immediate like, oh crap, feeling from the ones I said so far. Um, have you ever experienced the feeling like you wonder what the point of life is? As in, why are you doing the job you're doing? Is it really worth having the joy? Is it worth having all the money? Um, or if you've done all the work and you've got, the, you've got all the wealth and you say, is that all there is? These ponderings, questions, uncertainties are also part of what is when you're not owning yourself. So there's a, there's a wide spectrum what I'm speaking to here about where it is we don't own ourselves. And I'll explain what I mean and what that really is in a moment. I've got to tease that out a little bit. But the understanding that where you are feeling that life isn't giving you what you want or you're feeling that life is giving you what you, what you want, it's not what you think you or it's not what you realize that you really want. Let me try, I said that one too fast. Let me try that one again. <laughs> so first of all, there's the one where you basically you don't get what you want in life and you're feeling screwed, suffering, left out, hard, um, put upon, the victimized, whatever that is. Then you get everything you do want in life and it doesn't turn out to be what you thought it was. Both of those are the same thing ultimately, which is you're not owning yourself. Let me see if anything else I want to throw on the table just to keep you busy. Mm, let's see. Have you received an unexpected letter from somebody who needed something from you and you felt you had to give it to them and you felt really upset about it? Like the IRS, for example. Been there, done that. Um, <laughs> just to be totally transparent. Um, have you found yourself ostracized from a group of people you thought you were part of because you said something you shouldn't have said or somebody said something about you behind your back? That's another one. And, and you felt somehow hard done by or ashamed. That's the key, by the way, the feeling. Yes, I'm gonna explain more about that in a moment. Let me see if there's anything else that's top of mind that I'm talk about is what it is that might be triggering this experience of not being in a place of ownership of your life. Um, here's one that I know pretty well, is if you've done, if you, if you jumped into many, many seminars, teachings, trainings, workshops, read lots of books, studied with great teachers, and still don't feel like you've got your life together. That's one I know, I know intimately well at certain points in my life. <laughs> Much better now, though, because of everything I have learned and because of where I've come to, which is why I'm teaching this. Let me see if there's any more. Awesome. I'm going to see if there's any more because I want to be sure I really um, empty the basket of all the things that might come up for you. Um, have you felt like you don't seem like you wonder if you fit into this world? The world seems so crazy you don't even belong into it. Or you don't belong in it. Excuse me, not into it. You belong in it. I suddenly feel like you're an alien on the planet. Now, you might be an alien on the planet, but it's a thing about how you feel about that. <laughs> Again, I'm teasing ahead. And there's another one that's coming up. What was the other one? 
Well, here's a few more to throw at you right away. Have you felt like a victim when the police pull you over? Now, I know I have myself experienced that in the past, many years ago. Like, you, you, you get the flashing lights in the review and you got pulled over, and you're like, what did I do wrong? I didn't do anything wrong. Or you feel like you, do, you did something wrong. It's like, damn, they caught me. Either way, you're not in ownership. Um, if you've lost somebody close to you who passed away and you couldn't stop that happening, you may have felt like you weren't in control and it also was about not ownership. That's a deeper one. I'm not sure if I'm going to cover it this time because that can be really emotionally distressing. And I know some friends of mine who have lost their partners and friends in the last week or so and it's distressing for them. So I don't want to put this on them right now. But if you have some past experiences where you maybe lost out on something in life, and you're wondering what happened, this may help you. All right, that's enough of the reasons why you may be experiencing not being ownership. Let me explain what ownership is. In simple terms, ownership really is one, knowing who you are. And I don't just mean like looking in the mirror and go, yeah, my name is Barry Selby, et cetera, et cetera. I mean, knowing internally, viscerally who you are and where you live inside, that's like part two. So where you're anchored inside. And thirdly, recognizing that you have more freedom, more autonomy, more control. I don't want to use that word control because it doesn't fit in this context. Autonomy is better. More autonomy in the world and in your life than you thought you had. When you have ownership, what you're really doing is taking back your power, but not just to say, like, I'm dominating the world. It's actually taking back your power to say, you know what? I don't need to react to everything. I talked about this on Saturday or Friday about reacting versus responding. And the understanding that when you're in reaction, you are losing ownership. When you are responding, you do it from a place of ownership. That's a very clear difference. So you get the understanding of that. And I'll break that down in more detail. So having ownership of your life, owning who you are, is a conscious, intentional choice to have autonomy over your own life. Now, this sounds like it's like, what does that mean? It's like, I, I know what I am. I do it my life. It's like, well, here's the thing. If it, as, as I said in the beginning, if you find yourself reacting to what's happening around you because what somebody says or doesn't say, what you don't get from your partner or what they do to you or they don't do to you, what your job doesn't do for you, what the police do to you, whatever happens in the world around you or what you read in the newspaper or read online, if you're reacting to any of that, you're in a bad place of, excuse me, you're in a poor choice of place. Truthfully, when you learn how to respond and have discernment about how you choose to react to what happens in the world, excuse me, how you choose to respond to the world, not react, <laughs> then you have freedom. And truthfully, when you own yourself, is where freedom starts to happen. In my BFF master, I've been talking about for a while now, the second F is freedom. Because when you discover freedom and you start to own who you are, everything in life starts to work differently. And having understanding that's what it really is about owning your life, is you discover the power you have to make choices that work for you. I know a lot of people out there who don't think they have any choice. They've got to keep plodding away, got to do their nine, they've got to do their two jobs to make ends meet and frustrated by all that stuff that's happening because they don't know they have the freedom to choose and they don't know they have the power to have autonomy over their own life, owning your life. So the first part of that answer, or skip, or the question I was answering in the title, is when you own your life, you learn to have mastery. And the bigger part in some ways is do you accept responsibility for everything that happens in your life? That's a tall order, I know, but that's a big one. But I'm throwing that out there because I'm planting the seed, I'm planting the seed now. I should say I'm smacking you in the face <laughs> with it. But I'll explain more later on about how that works. Because the thing is, you may feel like, well, I'm going to take on the whole world. It's like, no, 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 it's not like about that. It's about learning to deal with life on your terms, not life's terms. Because you can. Yes, you can when you own your life. So, again, the way this works, or the way you are having this happen, is when things happen in your life, you witness and respond versus automatically react. Big difference. That's one of the biggest. That's one of the biggest delineations I would use for what is between where you are and where you want to be if you want to own your life. So the how to do it part. That's the bigger part we're going to talk about because that is. I'm going to give you some clues, but to teach you this is going to take you a few months. It took me thirty years, so don't sweat it if it's going to take you a bit longer than a few few hours, a few minutes. So first of all, understanding that with this experience of ownership, it takes some time to own your reactivity and to own your actions and to own your responses. So you start taking back your power. The biggest problem people have, I discovered in the world, 
is they give their power away to things they don't realize they're giving power away to in the first place. And they give power away to the police, or give power away to your partner, give power away to your family, give power away to your employer, all these different things. Because, and it's not, and it's not, let me be clear about this, it's not meaning you've got to just smack, you know, just spit in their face. I'm not talking about that sort of thing. It's about having the power to be able to respond to what's happening, even if you have no choice about the fact you have to do something. You have the freedom to choose to respond versus like reacting out of like, I don't want to do this, don't want to deal with this, you're wrong, I'm right, all those sort of things. And by the way, it's actually being right is another, another way of not being in ownership because being right is an ego-driven position against something else. Let me explain that one for a second. The, other, the thing about right and wrong is when you're attached to one, you tend to be in the other one without realizing it. So when you're attached to being right, it's, it's like quite likely that you end up being wrong. You're certainly going to be, as has been said before in other, in other talks, when you say like you'd rather be right or loving, well, if you're being wrong because you're not loving. So you may be right and attached to the position saying, I'm right, you're wrong, but you lose out on love or happiness or something else. So you end up being wrong ultimately. So that understanding of the ping pong match between right and wrong is another part of not being in ownership of yourself. All right, we're going to explain some hows. So the first part of learning how is to become aware, which sounds so simple. Become aware of your programming that's running, which isn't necessarily as easy as it sounds because really what it comes down to is to start reflecting on what it is about your life that works and what about it doesn't work. And where, what, it, what are the situations where you get triggered and react all the time? Because it happens frequently, I'm sure. Because each one of those is a clue to where you're not in alignment with yourself. This is the benefit or the blessing of those horrible things that happen to you. When life treats you like, it's like when, you know, when life gives you lemons, you make lemonade. Well, when you learn how to take mastery of your life and you start to take ownership and you own your life, then what you notice is those things around you no, no longer have mastery over you, no longer have control over you. Those things happen, you observe and then you respond. So if the traffic starts on the freeway, instead of cursing and blaming and judging everybody else, you just learn that life is happening. You can even use the time wisely, listening to the music or listening or writing or recording some new thoughts for a book or something. There's so many ways around it. So what I'm saying is when living in reactivity, nothing gets done, nothing healthy gets done. But when you own your space and you own your life, you make choices that are actually for you, not against you. Because when you're reacting, you're choosing against yourself, by the way. And that's not fun. That's why, again, being right versus wrong, no good choice. Understanding that what you're actually doing when you're taking ownership of your life is you're recognizing that you have the power and the authority to live as you choose. Now, I need to qualify that as I said that. Living as you choose is intentionally in alignment and harmony with the world around you. So it's not going to say, well, I'm going to live as I choose and I'm going to go around like pissing everybody off. That's not healthy. That's not recommended. That's not ownership either. That's still a reaction, by the way. Yes. Living independent of everybody else and becoming antagonistic to everybody else, that's a reaction. Because some part of you is driven to react to something that you don't believe or don't trust or don't want. When you live in authentic ownership of who you are, then the rest of the world does what it does and you're fine with it. Um... There is an extreme version of this, which is from Viktor Frankl, who wrote, wrote, a book, wrote a book called A Man's Search for Meaning when he was in the, in the concentration camps during the Second World War. He said that when all else is taken from him, the one thing that man has left is his attitude. He has choice for how he responds. Respond versus reaction is the big cornerstone of how to move into mastery, ownership, living your life fully. If you choose. So that's a little hint of where we're going, because, hang on, and a bit of scratch. <laughs> um, yes, this is live, this is real, this is authentic, so excuse me for doing what I'm doing. So this is the thing I want to tell you about, is that first of all, um, how do I say this? Well, I, my, my BFF Masterclass, which I've been talking about for a while, is leading to something else. So if you're interested, message me, I'll tell you more about that. But the thing about this is, when you learn to take mastery of your life and you start to have ownership of your life, then everything works out the way you meant to. Hey, Katie, long time no chat. Yes, indeed, it's been many, many moons. <laughs> so I'm actually just wrapping up this talk, but I'm talking about ownership of life. And some, something in our conversation today inspired this, by the way. So thanks for being the nudger for that. So this, this really is 
often under learning about how our lives can be a place where we own who we are and that differentiation between reaction versus response and choice versus no choice <laughs> is a place of freedom and if you want to have ownership of your life it starts with learning how to live fully in the body you're in expressing owning and respecting who you are and learning to watch how life throws things at you that you can say, say you know what I'm not going to react to that it isn't necessarily like a switch you turn on I mean I, I've had years of practice of this and learning it over many years so I'm learning how to teach it in a way that works and that's something I'm going to I'm seeding now for what I said about the 26th so keep tuned for that um, but this is the thing is that we have the choice every day to live life fully thank you yes <laughs> thank you Katie what's that I'm saying see more oh yes it is it is um yeah passion yes so it is interesting that my my as i said on the beginning of the broadcast this is my thousandth broadcast lands on the 26th of february which is an auspicious day that's what i'm saying <laughs> but katie you know I'm, you know i know about this so we'll talk about it more anyway um so this to summarize simply you can own your life you absolutely should oh See, I didn't see the post. You, no, I didn't see the post you just posted. I'll have a look after I sign off. I wasn't looking online for a, until I jumped on to do this, so I'll check it out when I sign off. Um, thoughts, thoughts, thoughts. If this is triggering stuff for you, good. <laughs> this topic is un, is knocking you sideways. Good. If you want to get some help with this, reach out to me. Um, I'm going to put a little reminder in the comments about loving yourself because my self love meditation is a go to guaranteed support system to have, get, help you get what you want. It's my voice guiding you morning and evening in two audio meditations with a written guidebook that will help you learn to put yourself first. Owning yourself does involve loving yourself. That's actually a one-to-one -one thing. So if you're not loving yourself, that's, a, that's one reason why you probably might have ownership. So what I spoke about earlier, you have things to play with, some stuff to talk about. And and I put, oh, by the way, I put the link to the self-love meditation in the comments. If you want to get it now before you put it in there, you go to barryselby.com forward slash self-love. You can, you can buy it and download it right there. But the thing about this really comes back to is it's time to change the way you live your life. <laughs> Thank you, Katie. You're so distracting. Yes, it's your gift. <laughs> so simply put, there's even more to come on this topic. I'm going to speak about this more and more the next few days because this is really the beginning of a new... Um, I mean, it's following up from what I talked about in my BFF Masterclass. Actually, I'll put a link in the comments too so you can check it out. But this is going to a deeper level because I want to go deeper in the work I'm doing and I'm helping a lot of people transform their lives. So stay tuned for February 26th. I'm not going to tell you else more than that. Um, yes. <laughs> Good, you'll take it. So that's about it. Um, by the way, this is my daily Facebook Live. If you haven't seen me talk online before, it is every day at, on, excuse me, seven days a week, every day on my personal page on Facebook, which is Barry Selby. Usually at 5 p.m. Pacific time is when I go live. So you can join me live every day. If you haven't seen my broadcasts, all 977, 978 of them, you go to my personal page on, excuse me, my business page on Facebook, which is Barry Selby. Or you can watch. There's about two or three hundred there because Facebook doesn't save all of them in the right place. But I have a backup plan. So go to my business page, which is Barry Selby. Author, and like my page, and then also go to my YouTube channel where all of them are definitely saved. I made sure of that. If you go to Barry uh, YouTube.com/user/barry Selby, subscribe to my channel. And there's a playlist on there called Messages from the Masculine, where all of these live from newest to oldest. You can search through by keywords. Find a title that stands out, speaks to you, and get the help you want. Most of them are about love and relationships, but there's more and more about self-support, self-love, and self-ownership that I'm talking about now. So again, there'll be two links in the comments. Well, you know what, today I'm just going to put the self-love meditation in the comments. If you want to find out, my, find, my, find out, try that in English. If you want to find out more about my BFF Masterclass, message me, I'll tell you more about it. And something else too. So with that, thank you for watching. I appreciate you being with me as always. This is my daily contribution to Inspire and Awaken. And if it helps you, great. If it doesn't help you, sorry. <laughs> if you have any questions, comments about this broadcast, please put them below and I'll respond when I sign off. I thank you for watching. Thank you for joining me. Take ownership of your life. Discover how you can have more of what you want and be who what you want. That's the choice you have. And with that, I'll see you again tomorrow and I appreciate you watching. So once again, as always, please take care of yourself. I'll see you again tomorrow.